Kashmir Conflict Post-1987 Insurgency in Indian Administered Kashmir 1987 State Elections An alliance of Islamic parties organized into Muslim United Front, MUF, to contest the 1987 state elections. Culturally, the growing emphasis on secularism led to a backlash with Islamic parties becoming more popular. MUF's election manifesto stressed the need to solve all outstanding issues according to the Simla Agreement, work for Islamic unity and against political interference from the center. Their slogan was wanting the law of the Quran in the assembly. There was highest recorded participation in this election. 80% of the people in the valley voted. MUF received victory in only four of the contested 43 electoral constituencies despite its high vote share of 31%, this means that its official vote in the valley was larger than one-third. The elections were widespreadly believed to have been rigged by the ruling party National Conference, allied with the Indian National Congress. In the absence of rigging, commentators believe that the MUF could have won 15 to 20 seats, a contention admitted by the National Conference leader Farooq Abdullah. Scholar Sumantra Bose, on the other hand, opines that the MUF would have won most of the constituencies in the Kashmir Valley. BBC reported that Kemlata Buklu, who was a leader of the Congress party at the time, admitted the widespread rigging in Kashmir. He stated, I remember that there was a massive rigging in 1987 elections. The losing candidates were declared winners. It shook the ordinary people's faith in the elections and the democratic process. 1989 Popular Insurgency and Militancy In the years since 1990, the Kashmiri Muslims and the Indian government have conspired to abolish the complexities of Kashmiri civilization. The world it inhabited has vanished, the state government and the political class, the rule of law, almost all the Hindu inhabitants of the valley, alcohol, cinemas, cricket matches, picnics by moonlight in the saffron fields, schools, universities, and independent press, tourists and banks. In this reduction of civilian reality, the sites of Kashmir are redefined, not the lakes and mogul gardens, or the story triumphs of Kashmiri agriculture, handicrafts and cookery, but two entities that confront each other without intermediary, the mosque and the army camp. In 1989, a widespread popular and armed insurgency started in Kashmir. After the 1987 state legislative assembly election, some of the results were disputed. This resulted in the formation of militant wings and marked the beginning of the Mujahideen insurgency, which continues to this day. India contends that the insurgency was largely started by Afghan Mujahideen who entered the Kashmir Valley following the end of the Soviet-Afghan War. Yashin Malik, a leader of one faction of the Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front, was one of the Kashmiris to organize militancy in Kashmir, along with Ashfaq Majidwani, Havid Ahmad Mir, and Abdul Hamid Sheikh. Since 1995, Malik has renounced the use of violence and calls for strictly peaceful methods to resolve the dispute. Malik developed differences with one of the senior leaders, Farooq Siddiqui, alias Farooq Papa, for shunning demands for an independent Kashmir and trying to cut a deal with the Indian Prime Minister. This resulted in a split in which Bida Karate, Salim Nanhaji, and other senior comrades joined Farooq Papa. Pakistan claims these insurgents are Jammu and Kashmir citizens, and are rising up against the Indian Army as part of an independence movement. Amnesty International has accused security forces in Indian-controlled Kashmir of exploiting an armed forces, special powers, act that enables them to hold prisoners without trial. The group argues that the law, which allows security forces to detain individuals for up to two years without presenting charges violates prisoners' human rights. In 2011, the State Human Rights Commission said it had evidence that 2,156 bodies had been buried in 40 graves over the last 20 years. The authorities deny such accusations. The security forces say the unidentified dead are militants who may have originally come from outside India. They also say that many of the missing people have crossed into Pakistan-administered Kashmir to engage in militancy. However, according to the State Human Rights Commission, among the identified bodies 574 were those of disappeared locals, and according to Amnesty International's annual Human Rights Report, 2012, it was sufficient for belying the security forces claim that they were militants. India claims these insurgents are Islamic terrorist groups from Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Afghanistan, 
fighting to make Jammu and Kashmir a part of Pakistan. They claim Pakistan supplies munitions to the terrorists and trains them in Pakistan. India states that the terrorists have killed many citizens in Kashmir and committed human rights violations whilst denying that their own armed forces are responsible for human rights abuses. On a visit to Pakistan in 2006, Former Chief Minister of Kashmir Omar Abdullah remarked that foreign militants were engaged in reckless killings and mayhem in the name of religion. The Indian government has said militancy is now in the decline. The Pakistani government calls these insurgents Kashmiri freedom fighters, and claims that it provides them only moral and diplomatic support. Although India believes they are Pakistan-supported terrorists from Pakistan-administered Kashmir. In October 2008, President Asif Ali Zardari of Pakistan called the Kashmir separatist terrorists in an interview with the Wall Street Journal. These comments sparked outrage amongst many Kashmiris, some of whom defied a curfew imposed by the Indian army to burn him in effigy. In 2008, pro-separatist leader Mirwais Umar Farooq told the Washington Post that there has been a purely indigenous, purely Kashmiri peaceful protest movement alongside the insurgency in Indian administered Kashmir since 1989. The movement was created for the same reason as the insurgency and began after the disputed election of 1987. According to the United Nations, the Kashmiris have grievances with the Indian government, specifically the Indian military, which has committed human rights violations. In 1994, the NGO International Commission of Jurists sent a fact-finding mission to Kashmir. The ICJ mission concluded that the right of self-determination to which the peoples of Jammu and Kashmir became entitled as part of the process of partition had neither been exercised nor abandoned, and thus remained exercisable. It further stated that as the people of Kashmir had a right of self-determination, it followed that their insurgency was legitimate. It, however, did not follow that Pakistan had a right to provide support for the militants. 1999 Conflict in Kargil In mid-1999, alleged insurgents and Pakistani soldiers from Pakistani Kashmir infiltrated Jammu and Kashmir. During the winter season, Indian forces regularly move down to lower altitudes, as severe climatic conditions makes it almost impossible for them to guard the high peaks near the line of control. This practice is followed by both India and Pakistan Army. The terrain makes it difficult for both sides to maintain a strict border control over line of control. The insurgents took advantage of this and occupied vacant mountain peaks in the Kargil range overlooking the highway in Indian Kashmir that connects Srinagar and Leh. By blocking the highway, they could cut off the only link between the Kashmir Valley and Ladakh. This resulted in a large-scale conflict between the Indian and Pakistani armies. The final stage involved major battles by Indian and Pakistani forces resulting in India recapturing most of the territories held by Pakistani forces. Fears of the Kargil War turning into a nuclear war provoked the then United States President Bill Clinton to pressure Pakistan to retreat. The Pakistan army withdrew their remaining troops from the area, ending the conflict. India regained control of the Kargil peaks, which they now patrol and monitor all year long. 2000s Al-Qaeda involvement In a letter to American people written by Osama bin Laden in 2002, he stated that one of the reasons he was fighting America was because of its support for India on the Kashmir issue. While on a trip to Delhi in 2002, U.S. Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld suggested that Al-Qaeda was active in Kashmir though he did not have any hard evidence. An investigation by a Christian Science Monitor reporter in 2002 claimed to have unearthed evidence that al-Qaeda and its affiliates were prospering in Pakistan-administered Kashmir with tacit approval of Pakistan's Inter-Services Intelligence Agency, ISI. In 2002, a team comprising Special Air Service and Delta Force personnel was sent into Indian-administered Kashmir to hunt for Osama bin Laden after reports that he was being sheltered by the Kashmiri militant group Harakat al-Mujahideen. U.S. officials believed that al-Qaeda was helping organize a campaign of terror in Kashmir to provoke conflict between India and Pakistan. Their strategy was to force Pakistan to move its troops to the border with India thereby relieving pressure on al-Qaeda elements hiding in northwestern Pakistan. U.S. intelligence analysts say al-Qaeda and Taliban operatives in Pakistan-administered Kashmir are helping terrorists trained in Afghanistan to infiltrate Indian-administered Kashmir. Fazlur Rahman Khalil, the leader of the Harakat al-Mujahideen, signed al-Qaeda's 1998 Declaration of Holy War which called on Muslims to attack all Americans and their allies. In 2006 al-Qaeda claim they have established a wing in Kashmir, 
which worried the Indian government. Indian Army Lieutenant General H.S. Connick, Gawkin C. Northern Command, told reporters that the Army has ruled out the presence of al-Qaeda in Indian administered Jammu and Kashmir. He said that there no evidence to verify media reports of an al-Qaeda presence in the state. He ruled out al-Qaeda ties with the militant groups in Kashmir including lashkar e Taiba and jish e Muhammad. However, he stated that they had information about al-Qaeda's strong ties with lashkar e Taiba and jish e Muhammad operations in Pakistan. While on a visit to Pakistan in January 2010, U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates stated that al-Qaeda was seeking to destabilize the region and planning to provoke a nuclear war between India and Pakistan. In June 2011, a U.S. drone strike killed Ilyas Kashmiri, chief of Harakat al-Jihad al-Islami, a Kashmiri militant group associated with al-Qaeda. Kashmiri was described by Bruce Riedel as a prominent al-Qaeda member while others described him as the head of military operations for al-Qaeda. Waziristan had by then become the new battlefield for Kashmiri militants fighting NATO in support of al-Qaeda. Ilyas Kashmiri was charged by the U.S. in a plot against Yolans Posten, the Danish newspaper at the center of the Yolans Posten Mohammed cartoons controversy. In April 2012, Farman Ali Shinwari a former member of Kashmiri separatist groups Harakat al-Mujahideen and Harakat al-Jihad al-Islami, was appointed chief of al-Qaeda in Pakistan.